Our scripture comes from Luke 17 this morning. If you want to turn along in your Bibles and read along with me. Luke chapter 17. We'll be reading verses 11 through 19. Luke 17 beginning in verse 11. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go, your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord for us today. It's a a cry that can be heard for, for quite some distance. The cries of the sick. I I I don't know if you've ever had the the chance to walk down the halls of a a hospital or a nursing home or even some assisted living places and you hear the, the echo of those cries, those who are in, in distress or in pain. Uh, sometimes you can't even tell where those cries are coming from, but you, you know it when you hear it. Uh, the pain, the agony in their voices as they cry out, pleading for mercy, for help, for, for anyone just to hear them to listen, to come to their aid, to come be by their side, making bargains with God, if and only if, Lord, have mercy on me. Those are are desperate pleas for help. Agonizing calls for mercy that, that sadly we sense so often go, unheard or unanswered. These cries that we read of here today are are from those that have been banished from the community that they had lived in. They're they're shunned because of what they had suffered or what they were suffering from now. And as, as cruel as that might seem, part of the law was if you were suffering from an infectious disease, you were isolated from the rest of the community. You were isolated for the sake of your family and your friends and for the whole village to keep it uh, from spreading, for to keep that disease from, from running rampant and wiping out your entire village. Think, think bubonic plague here that, that killed millions. This was intended to stop that. That's why they were shunned, why they were kept outside the city gates. That's why they had to shout, unclean, unclean, anytime someone come near them to keep from spreading disease. But but even in knowing the why, it's a lonely time in your life. To be, to be banished, to be shunned in that way. It's misery on top of misery. Not only were these men suffering from this debilitating disease, but they'd been isolated from those that they loved. Life was hard on the outside. Almost impossible. I'm sure that any time they saw anyone pass them by, you could hear these cries for, for mercy ring out. Would you, would you please just give me something to eat? Would you, would you give me something to bandage my wounds? Would you, would you just let me know how my, my wife is doing? Would you give me word for my children? Could you hear the desperation 
in their voice, anything that they could get from their friends, from their acquaintances, those that they once knew and loved, yet now for the most part just passed them by as if they weren't even there. Can you imagine? But on, on this particular day that we read, these men hear and see off in the distance, they see this, this great crowd of people who are now coming into the town, this, this joyous bunch of folks singing and laughing. And can you imagine, can you just picture the rejoicing that's going along, this, this whole bunch of people that's coming into this village. We, we read of it in many places that, that follow Jesus everywhere He goes, and they, they seem to be focusing their attention on this, on this one man that's in the midst of them. Uh, and as they get closer, uh, perhaps they overhear, overhear who He is, or maybe they just instinctively know because of what they've already heard about Him, that this is Jesus. This is the one we've heard so much about. This is the one that we've heard can, can, can give sight back to the blind. This is the one that we've heard can make the lame walk and the dumb talk. This is the one that we've heard can even bring life back from the death. We've heard so much about him. And, and if he could do that in other places, in other towns... And for other people, maybe, just maybe, He can do that for me. Maybe He can do that for us. And so they begin to cry out yet again, but you know, there, there's got to be something uh, a little bit different in their pleas this time. A little, bit, uh, a little bit more in their cries for mercy. A little bit of a tinge of hope that their prayers are going to be answered as they cry out this time. Uh, they're sure to keep their distance because that's what they're required to do, but they, uh, they cry out nonetheless. And, and don't you just hear the desperation uh, can be detected by all that are, that are walking with Jesus as they just cry out one more time, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Maybe, maybe you've been there. Maybe you've cried that same prayer. Lord, have mercy on me. Maybe you've been at that same point. Nobody else can heal. Nobody else can feel what you felt. And your only option is to cry out to God. Perhaps this would be the answer to their prayers. Perhaps Jesus could do some mighty miracle right here in their midst. Maybe, maybe he could cause some great wind to blow upon them and the leprous spots just fall right off of them like scales. You know, maybe he would come and, and lay hands upon them and, and one by one just touch them and their skin become uh, like a baby's bottom, just soft and new once again. Uh, maybe, maybe he would make some mud concoction like he did for the blind man and apply it on them and, and they would be healed yet again. What miracle upon miracles would he do for them in this moment? Can't you just feel the anticipation in the air? All their attention is focused now upon Jesus as they cry out to him for mercy, for his care. All their senses, whatever senses aren't, aren't deadened by this disease, they're all come alive and anticipation and, and Jesus he hears their pleas for mercy uh, and he turns to them uh, and they could tell he's about to speak to them uh, and they, they, they perk up even more I'm sorry I, I, as I think about that I, I can't help but think of the greatest movie of all time um, you know what that is anyone Forrest Gump um, and in the movie Forrest Gump, when Forrest has been running and running and running and he's run across the country for forever and ever and ever, and nobody knows why he's doing it. They've, they've made all these guesses. He's running for world peace and blah, 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 blah. Finally, one day, he just stops. And he's, he's got this great crowd of people following him and running along with him. And after he just stops there in the middle of the road, and the crowd, they, they've been following him and... This hush follow, falls over them. Shh. He, he, and Forrest turns around and he's, he's, he's going to speak. We're finally going to know why he's doing what he's doing. Shh, be quiet, listen. 
And all Forrest has to say is, I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. Anyway, that's, but that's what I picture here with these guys as they, they finally get Jesus' attention and Jesus turns around and they're, they've been yelling and screaming and pleading for, for mercy and then they see that Jesus, they've got his attention and now, shh, be quiet, be quiet. He, he's going to say something. He's going to do something. Let's, let's listen. That's the anticipation that's built up in their mind. And yet Jesus, as he speaks, he simply says, go. Go and show yourself to the priests. And there they are. You know, they're grabbing hold of each other. They've got each other by the shoulders, by the hand. Wait, what? Go. What's that, Jesus? Jesus. Go show ourselves to the priest. That, that's it? That's all you want us to do? No, no parting of the waters? We don't have to stand on our head and count to ten? We don't, have to, uh, we don't have to send off and read for 15 books on prayer? We don't have to send in $50 and, and get a prayer hanky that's been blessed by the, the mountain guru and the, with his sweat that, that's been blessed by God? We don't have to do any of that stuff? You, you just want us to go show ourselves to the priest. That's it. Now, now, Jesus, you do realize that the priest is the one that banished us out here in the wilderness for the first, in the first place, right? It, it's the priest that, that uh, even though when we think that we're better, better, we go and see him and he says, nope, 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 you still got some infection there, seven more days, 14 more days, one more month, come back and see me then and we'll see, we'll talk. And time after time and time they go to the priest and it's the priest that says, nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. How many times had they made that trip to the priest, hoping beyond hope that they would be deemed worthy to re-enter the community? And the priest said, nope. And now here's the one that could, that could heal, the one that could say yes, and he says, go see the priest. Hmm. But, but, there is something different this time, because this time Jesus is the one that said to do it. Jesus is the one that is sending. So because Jesus said to go, they go. They, they simply follow the command of the Lord. They did what Jesus asked them to do. The Master bid them go, and so they went. They went in obedience to God. They may not even understand why they were going. They may not understand what they were doing. But Jesus said go, so they went. There was no fancy spells, no frills, no dances, no, no nothing. Just go. Go see the priest. Be obedient to the master. And that's what they did. It reminds me of the story of, of Naaman in, in 2 Kings. Do you know this story? Naaman is, is a, a commander in the Syrian army. He's not even a Jew. He's not even Israelite. But he's a Syrian. And Naaman comes down with leprosy. But he's heard about his neighbors to the south in Israel. And he's heard about this prophet who calls upon the name of this God. Uh, and he's heard about the miraculous things that he's done because of a slave girl that he actually has in his household. She's told him of these things. Uh, and so he, he reaches out. Long story short, he ends up going to Israel hoping... To, to find healing. And he finds his way to Elisha's house. And Elisha doesn't even bother getting up off the couch. He just sends his servant out and says, Go tell Naaman, go down to the Jordan, dip yourself in the river seven times and you'll be healed. And you know what Naaman did? He, he wasn't too happy with that. He said, well, you know, surely I thought that this prophet of God, who, who's supposed to be uh, this one true God, would come out and he would wave his hand and do some magic dance and, and I would be healed right here on the spot. 
Why, I could go dip myself in any river of my homeland. Why would I waste my time coming down all the way here? But listen to what his servant, Naaman's servant, had to say to him. His servant said, If the prophet would have told you to do some great and miraculous thing, you'd have been happy to do it. But how much more so when he says, Just go wash and be cleansed. Something simple. And so he did. And he was made whole. These lepers, these ten lepers, they didn't have to do anything fancy. They just had to follow the word of the Lord. Just go. Go and be healed. And they went and they did what God told them to do. They did what Jesus told them to do in obedience. And along the way, they found healing. Notice they, the healing didn't come and then they went. They went and then they were healed. The healing came in obedience. How, how many times have, have we heard the statements, Lord, if you will just heal my son or my daughter or my mother or my father or my, my husband or my wife, I, I'll trust you completely. If you'll, just, if you'll just heal me, if you'll just do this for me, then I'll give my life to you. I will serve you if you'll just get me out of this mess that I'm in. Lord Jesus, if, 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 if you'll get my sister's cousin's dog's nephew's babysitter out off of drugs, I'll go to church every time the doors are open. I don't know, maybe some of you are here today because of a bargain you made like that. And God bless you, I'm proud you are. Thank you, Lord. But I want us to see today that our obedience to the Lord is not based on some conditional give and take. Because we fail at that every time. We never hold our end of the bargain up. Never. So many people, so many times, so many of us put this condition on God. When He does what, what we want Him to do, then I'll serve Him. But our obedience has to come before, during, and after the storms of life. Before, during, and after our cries for mercy. And, and see, I don't know... There was a stigma attached to leprosy in, this day, in these days. There, there still is a stigma attached to some diseases, to, to some ailments, uh, to some of the things that we suffer as if they're punishments from God. I don't know. I, what I do know is the choices that we make have consequences. And some of those consequences are diseases. Some of those consequences of the choices that we make take us down roads that, that we don't need to go down. Some of those choices that we make lead to death. And that's on us. That's sin. That's not God. But for a lot of folks, the complete last resort that we find ourselves in is to cry out to God. God, if you're real. God, if you'll hear me. God, have mercy on me. God, if, then. But we've got to know instead of a last-ditch effort, our first cry needs to be to God, not the last. We got to know that he is the creator of all things. He is the ruler of all. He is the Lord of all, including my life. That we are nothing without him. So take our cares, our concerns to him first. We put our faith in him as savior and lord. We we serve him Faithfully, And when those problems come, when they arise in our lives, and they will come, when those troubles come, taking our cares and our, our concerns to Him, our pleas for mercy to the Father uh, in heaven, comes so much more natural. It comes so much more easy uh, when we've already trusted Him from the beginning, when we're already walking in obedience to Him from the very start, when we're walking in obedience to the King of kings and Lord of lords. In this way, when God... 
God speaks to our situation, when, when God gives a word, when He says be patient, or when He says to go, or when He says stay, or when He says not yet, we've all, we're already used to being uh, committed. We're already used to being obedient to Him. And it's not a stretch to say, Lord, I, I can't trust You. I don't know what to do. Help me. We're already used to following His Word, even now in the midst of whatever storm has come in our life. We've got to be obedient before the storm to know how to be obedient during the storm. But I want you to see there's one last part to this Scripture today. And that's be obedient after the storm as well. When God does bring healing, when God does bring us through, and He does walk through with us every step of the way. Carrying us through is probably more like it. Through those trials of life. We've got to remember to be obedient after the trials. In our scripture here, we find that one out of ten came back to give praise to Jesus for making him whole. One out of ten comes to bow down to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The other nine go right back into the life that led them to the disease in the first place. Do you see that? Oh, I know they're eager to get back, to, to be cleared by the priest, to go to see their family, probably to get a decent meal. Uh, who could blame them for those things? But, but this is a life, you see, that, that is one that results in, I'm sure to receive, I'm sure to take whatever God will give me in the moment without taking the time to, to give back to Him when it would be an inconvenience for me. I'll take what I can get for God. God, if you'll just do this for me, then I'll worship you, except God does this for me, and then, oh yeah, well, I, I'm too busy now for you, God. I, I sure, uh, thanks, but... See, we've always got an, a but attached to our conditions. That's what the nine have here. But one turned back. One took the time to stop and give thanks for the healing that he did not merit, did not deserve. And because of his obedience, he found even greater blessings on this day. When we walk with the Lord, when, we, when things are going well, when, when things don't make sense, when, when things look the worst... When we trust in Him and walk in His ways, we find His grace, we find His mercy, we find His peace in walking with Christ. Maybe, maybe you're struggling today. Maybe, maybe you're here and you've been bargaining with God. God, if you'll just heal my husband. God, if you'll just heal me. God, if you'll heal my finances. God, if you'll, if you'll do this then I, I'll be at church every time the doors are open. Stop it. Stop it. You don't mean it. Just stop. Just be obedient to God, whether you find healing in whatever you're in or not. Be obedient every day in the little stuff, in the little things of God, like loving God because He loved you first. Like putting Him first in your life where He ought to be. Putting Him over and above all other things where He deserves to be, where He demands to be. Listen to His voice and see what He's asking you to do. He's not asking you to jump through some great hoops. He simply asks for you to love Him as you've been loved. And in return for His love, we serve Him. We do it with a pure heart, with pure motives. Obedient heart. And when we do those things, just watch and see what blessings flow. As we sing our closing hymn this morning, if you're here and you've been bargaining with God, let's, let's put an end to those bargains today. But come... 
and give yourself completely to Him this morning. Say, God, I give my all to You. Without condition. I accept You for who You are. Take me for who I am. And work in me. Give yourself completely today. And watch and see what He'll do. If that's You, would You come? Come as we sing. If you're here today and you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, don't leave here without calling on Him for your salvation. He is Lord. There's no getting around that. Would you let Him be Lord of your life this morning? As we sing our closing hymn, would you come? Jesus, I come.